All right. So welcome everybody to our last Agile Games of the year. And uh, today we have the Red Bean Experiment and we have Terry Erickson with us. Uh, she's a managing principal and lean implementation coach for, is it Kata Consulting? Kata Consulting, yeah. Like, yeah, there you go. Um, so after working in the building and industry, industrial industry as a structural engineer and engineering manager for over 20 years. Terry is now the owner of a consulting firm that specializes in creatively supporting teams as they implement lean and continuous improvement in their projects and organizational culture. She's been integrating Scrum and Kanban method into her work for the past five years. And then she has her partner here in crime, uh, Rick, Rick Burnett. He's an MBA adjunct professor for St. Cloud University. Rick is a semi-retired management consultant. He specializes in organizations that have complex business development, engineering, and manufacturing processes by applying continuous improvement initiatives. Rick has been teaching as college instructor in operations management for over 16 years. So thank you, Terry and Rick, for uh, joining us today and leading us through this simulation. So I'll turn it over to you and we'll check this out. Excellent. Thank you, Marissa. Um, thanks for the introduction. Uh, Rick, you want to say hi? Hi. So I'm Rick right. and I... Yeah. Rick and I um, actually teach, uh, well, he's the main teacher and then I teach with him. And so we've been kind of, we do this simulation every year with our uh, the, the class that we teach. Um, we teach a master's of engineering management class and we teach operations management at, with St. Cloud, St. Uh, Cloud uh, Metro State. So, um, all right, so let's go ahead. Um, let's just get started. We're, um, let's just dive into the simulation. And then what we'll do is, is towards the end of it, we'll um, talk about it. So has anybody ever seen uh, the the Deming red bead experiment before? Okay. All right. And nobody was curious and went out and watched a YouTube video on it. <laughs> okay, perfect. We're going to just do it then. Um, so what I'm going to need is um, to get started. So um, first of all, um, Rick is um, Rick. What we're going to do is we're going to play act that we're a uh, a company, and we are um, Rick. Could you tell us a little bit about our company since you are the CEO? Right. Yeah. So we have a an opportunity to provide a new product. We'll just call it the the white bead. Is what the customer wants and. Uh, we want to be in business. I'm the CEO. I've invested a lot of money on this operation, and I hired Terry to kind of manage the day-to-day. -day. So she's going to be um, hiring the people that she needs, providing the materials that are needed, et cetera. And uh, we will then um, assess how well this investment is, and if we need to take corrective actions, um, I will. We'll do it. So we just want to make sure that terry's keeping her job okay he's a he's a top ceo but we have shareholders to please and, and so i i'm a fan of elon musk so <laughs> be prepared so we're gonna work hard email. be prepared for the big emails <laughs> okay um okay so i sent out a link and um i'm looking for five willing workers um to come in i need four workers and really one inspector um, but I'm going to share a screen as well um, for this whole simulation. So not everyone has to go in to there, but I, I do need to um, get some folks in. It looks like, oh, good, I've got one. So anonymous Kiwi, who is that? I think that's can... me. Sorry, my mouse isn't, isn't working right this morning. No, that's OK. Um, <laughs> so that's awesome. Um, I, I figure in the beginning, like in the construction industry, almost no one has Google accounts and Gmail. So like when we would do this with folks, um, when I would do this with folks, I'd get like no one knew how to get into a Google spreadsheet. So I'm counting on the fact that some of you know how to get in without me going through a training. But if we can't figure that out, that's okay. Um, so Jeff, was it Jeff that's in there? No, Niels. Niels. Or is Jeff too? I don't know. Okay, Niels, perfect. So Niels is in there. Um, anybody else? First of all, everybody does see my screen at this point, right? right. Yes. Does it show that I'm in? I think I just tried to. Okay, join. perfect. I There's do see visitors. some of you. I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm gonna reshare so I have the uh, the uh, sound on. I think I'm in too. Oh shoot! I shared the wrong one. Okay, I'll yeah. look now. It looks like we've got some more folks in. Yeah, I join. It looks like it's blocked by my corporate network to go in. 
Okay. The, the That's the other thing I run into. Yeah, the corporate. Okay, so it looks like we've got five. So um, as long as we've got five people in, we're good. Um, so the other thing that I found is that um, Excel is not, um, the Microsoft Excel online or whatever is not always the most um, fluid uh, program to work with on Zoom. So we'll, but we'll, we'll do this and this is how I developed it. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go through a training. So the first thing I wanna do is um, let's go, can everybody flip to the, that's in there. Can you flip to the bottom training? And actually, this is where I think I could do this. Um, we're gonna do worker um, to, uh, to um, down at the bottom, I think I should have done this. Uh, I just wanna get your names so that we've got them. If you could put, uh, actually, just put, put your name somewhere down below this paddle thing. Okay. And I think, at least for me, I have view only mode. So my option is to request edit access. Should I go ahead and do that? Does it, it did it really do that because I said share and then maybe you guys can help me through this anyone with the link oh there we go okay let me redo this okay, okay. well if I do that does it now work. Um, maybe if I refresh no. yeah refresh the page and then it okay. to be good. Bam yeah. Okay, now you can. Okay. So, so obviously we were we were caught with a dilemma that this was this was always done um, physically in person. So you know people had to try to figure it out. I'm I'm an engineer, so I just kind of went to Excel. You know my go-to tool, um, which is probably the thing that caused a lot so, of yeah. yeah. So if you what? see the if you go into the top of yeah. the visual, you'll see a, a paddle with uh, some white beads and red beads. And, and, and the product that we're trying to produce is white beads. Yep. And uh, the paddle, which is the little thing, the students would typically grab, uh, hold, and scoop the paddle into uh, the raw materials. And the goal is, of course, to produce good white beads. Now, there's some techniques that Terry will discuss regarding how to get um, uh, the goal is 100% white. Uh, and some techniques that need to be followed. And we're gonna basically use the computer as, and it is random so that uh, what you get is just, you know, it's not like pre-programmed or anything, um, just like you would. So the, think of it, the paddle, and when you go in and you're working, you're basically trying to get white beads. Yeah, and everybody sees this image, right, that I've got up. Okay, so that's kind of what it looked like in person. So now here we are um, in the post-COVID world trying to do um, simulations. So um, I'm going to quick shut this, and then we're going to go ahead and do this. Um, okay, so what we're going to first do is we're going to first um, pick somebody to be our recorder. Niels, you were the first one in. Can you be our recorder? Um, which means that um, you're going to end up being the person that enters the results. Um, you're the inspector. Um, and what's going to happen is, is when um, the beads show up, uh, this, this, all right, I can already see. I did, I did a little training um, uh, thing. And what you're going to do is you're going to count the beads um, on the, uh, you're going to count the beads that are actually on the, I'm going to delete that because it's not working. Um, count the beads that are, show up on the paddle when the worker works. And so every time we dip our paddle in, we're basically demonstrating kind of doing work for a week. And there's um, the white beads is the product that we want. Um, the red beads is a defect. Um, and so that's um, how it's going to go. And you're going to put the, um, the results in. Does that sound clear to you? I can't hear you, but. Um, I guess I was double muted. What results do I put in? Do I put the number of white or the number of red? red the number Good question. Of beads. You're going to put the number of red beads in. Yes. And okay. um, and we'll and when we get to what you're going to be doing is is you're going to be entering it actually on the worker sheet when we go there. And so you're going to be the only person that has to flip back and forth between worker one, worker two, worker three when we go to work. This is just a training sheet. So right now um, we'll go through and do a little training um, with each person. Um, so this is like, you know, this is orientation day. 
Um, so Marissa, let's start with you. This is this is the training for how to do this. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to demonstrate how we're going to do our work for the week. And um, if, if we all do exactly the same thing, there won't be any variation. So therefore, it, it will be a very, very clear comparison amongst you of, of our, our team. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to this J5 cell. You're going to put in um, the week number. Um, this time, I think what we'll do is we'll just, you just put in a number and then you wait. Here, let me do this again because I, I realize I screwed up on the timing. So I'm going to put it in and I'm going to wait 2.4 seconds and then I'm going to hit enter. Okay. So I'm going to put in the week number and 2.4. I, I think I hit it perfectly. I'm the manager and I trained you guys and I just, I think I hit 2.4 perfectly. So randomly, when I do that, it randomly generates. And so as Niels, how many red beads did I get? Oh, you're double muted. You should just stay off double mute because now you're my <laughs> co-host. Oh, yeah. Sorry. My kids were just leaving for school. It was kind of loud. All right. I think oh. I just definitely know. So okay. I see three on the shared screen, but on the workbook, I only see one. Um, are you on the training sheet? I am. Okay, so you're only seeing one on the on the worksheet. Yeah. What about everybody else? Are you only seeing one? Yep, just one. Okay, you know there's a delay. That's frustrating. Um, I so see three. you see three. Okay, so we'll have to. This is this is good. We've got multiple people. There's a delay for some reason, and so I don't know. Uh, this is the problem with uh, Excel. So. We will work together, but at the end of the day, um, we'll you'll, we'll just tell we'll make sure that you say it out loud, and then we'll all agree. So it'll be like we're all multi-inspecting. Okay, Marissa, would you please um, do one training um, and go ahead and put? Are, in that it's important for the the uh, the. Not only do you have to put the day of the weekend, you also have to, uh, you know, there's a delay of two point four seconds between um, the uh, when you hit it and you know when you put the number in and then when you actually enter and then there is some kind of uh we found that there's some kind of um if you hit the keyboard too hard or too light um there's also uh, a potential of things going on uh regarding the effects yeah. so you want to hit it at a kind of a nice middle middle level yes all right marissa you're up training okay okay and so i Click where the two is. I just replace that with. Uh, just replace it with a different number for right now. Okay. Um, let's go to three, and then I wait two point four seconds before hitting enter. Yes. Okay. With a mid level, a mid level tap. Okay. Boom. She did create a new uh, generation, and then how, uh, Niels, can you tell how many uh, red beads she got? I don't see any. Look on my screen then. I'm looking on your screen. I don't see any. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> there aren't any. <laughs> I was gonna say I got I got zero. Right. <laughs> okay, I was just expecting the delay. Um, oh, okay, we've so, got a perf perfect person here, a good worker. That's very nice, Marissa. Um, okay, so let's have Jeff do the next one. One one just popped up on my screen. Yeah, I got it too. Yeah, I've got three on the yeah. On my screen. Oh, so. oh, oh, I'm sorry, Niels. Um, for right now, Niels, don't do any entry for this one, just because okay. this this is how Excel like we're we're screwing screwing around. Okay. All right. So Jeff, it's okay. The paddle sometimes you know ends up in there, but now you're you're gonna go do your work. So you put in a unique number in the box. Two point four seconds. Mid level tap. One. Excellent. Only one defect. Okay. Um, all right. So, so far, Rick, I think we've got two good employees. Yeah. Um, okay, Lisa, Here how about you? <laughs> now there's two. Okay, she put in five and how many beads? None. Oh, you got two? You're seeing two? Mm -hmm. I'm seeing zero, Terry. I'm seeing I'm, zero. I'm seeing one. Uh, are you looking on the pad? Okay, everybody, let's let's have the final judge be the Zoom screen view. Okay. Yep. Okay. This is the dilemma. You know, I'm not a computer programmer, people. Okay, just for the record. Neither am I. 
<laughs> just an engineer yeah, in Excel. Okay, so um, I think Lisa did an excellent job, Rick. Another great worker that's going to work in our um, in our process. So, and then Matt, how about you? All right. And is everybody seeing one with one. me? Okay. So one. Okay. So we've got great workers here, Rick. And I think, why don't we go ahead and um, start? We're going to go through four weeks. Uh, we're going to do four weeks of work here and, um, and let's see um, how our workers do. And um, we'll just go in order. So each, you know, so we'll start off with uh, Niels. He'll, he'll do this, you know, and then just move down the list. Uh, as quickly as we can. Again, the goal is to hit zero defects. We know that there is going to be a few, a few defects, um, but we're trying to minimize it. Um, Terry has worked with uh, engineering, and we know that the 2.4 delay and the medium touch seems to affect things in a positive way. So that's what we want you to do. And when we get going, we're just going to go as quickly as we can. No, no, not too much scuttlebutt to talk, um, you know, regarding. And we'll just see how uh, see how the team does when we're under a, quote, real production environment. And by the way, quality starts with you. And one more thing, be red, be dead. All right. So let me uh, let me share. Uh, here we go. I'm going to go back to sharing and let's go ahead. And so what we're going to do is is we're going to need um, everybody. Uh, so let's have Marissa, your worker one, Jeff, your worker two, Lisa, your worker three and Matt, your worker four. And you're going to go to your worker screen. OK. Um, and they're down at the bottom. So just go to the one that you are. And then when you get there, you can go ahead and put um, where it says name question mark, go ahead and put your name. So Marissa, are you in? Yes. Work on. Okay, perfect. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm guessing there's like a delay and I just need to, if I can refresh, maybe it'll come up. Um, I think um, I think Microsoft has a vision that this is actually simultaneously working, but <laughs> okay. So I see Marissa. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, and don't worry, um, Niels, when you go to enter results, so you're gonna enter the results down below in that yellow um, for Marissa. When you go to enter them, it's gonna change the paddle. So you gotta, we just get the number, and you and what's nice is, is you don't have to count all the red squares. Over on the right, it will count them. It was counting them. What is going on? What happened, Rick? Oh, um, Excel, Excel virus. Yeah, I think I screwed. I must have screwed something up. Um, because it's not giving the right numbers. Okay, so whoa, that means we're gonna have to physically count them. That stinks. Um, okay, well, let, we'll just count. So, Marissa, go ahead and do week one. Okay. Make sure you maintain the manufacturing rules. Got it. All right, let's count them up. I'm getting 19, but your view is different from my view. Well, go to my view, go to the Zoom okay. view, because that'll be the one that we'll just all use. Uh, 15. <laughs> And everybody can count. Everybody can count. Niels is the entry. Enter. So fifteen. We agree. Yep. Okay. And now we're going to go to Marissa. You can just wait, and then we're going to go to worker two. Okay. So Jeff, um, we're on your screen now. Jeff, you can go ahead and and do your. Um, once you enter one, then I'll see that the whole th the paddle has changed. Okay. Pretty good first week. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. 14. Okay. Does everybody get 14? <clears throat> I had 15. Yeah, I'm getting I had 15. 15. 15. Okay. 15. 15. Put 15 in. Okay. All right. Let's go to worker three. Lisa. We're still in week one. Thirteen. Thirteen. Wow, we already have a, a high performer here, Rick. Good. 
All right, let's go to worker four, Matt. Thirteen. Thirteen for him. All right. I mean, it's end of uh, end of week one, Rick. We've got basically two thirteen performers, and we have two fifteen performers. What do you think? Well, it's the first week, so I'm sure improvement will occur. Maybe we should say the slogans again. We need motivation, Terry. The customer first, everyone. Okay, quality starts with you. Um, so let's start week two, Marissa. Guys, you really have to believe that. I mean, quality yeah. does, does start with you. That's how I became a millionaire. And that's <laughs> my my advice to all you people. I feel like I'm being trolled. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna change this to two. All right. Oh boy. 19. 19. 19. Um, <laughs> Yikes. I mean, just like, just worker one, worker two, um, you are using 2.4 seconds and you're also using a softer touch. So make sure to do that. That's how I did it um, when I trained you and you understand that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, worker two, Jeff. Seventeen. Seventeen. <clears throat> All right, let's go to worker three. Lisa. Seventeen. Wow. Okay, worker four, Matt. Uh oh. Wow. Wow. Funny. So Rick, um, we basically had everyone performed at an at like twenty percent worse. Like or what, five percent or ten. I think I think Terry, your management style may be a little aggressive. Um uh, perhaps uh you should try to uh, ease up take a training class in supervision and use a concept called um, uh, situational management and manage accordingly. So I'm gonna spend some money. You're gonna go through some training to be a better supervisor, a better motivator of people. I actually become a leader and then uh, we'll have you uh, talk to your folks and we'll try it again. Yeah, we should have more leadership training. I, I see that at my client's office. That's going to solve it. Well, yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, I'm convinced. Mm -hmm. I'll invest the money. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, again, everybody, we went through the training. So let's try again um, in, in week three. The other thing that we have to know is that our client is getting, now customer has been getting some of these red beads and they're getting giving some feedback that we've got some poor quality going on. So we really got to step up our game. This is an important new customer that's trying to, um, that we're trying to work with. Um, so Marissa, uh, let Marissa, let's go back to worker one. Marissa, let's uh, go ahead with week three. Eighteen. All right, Jeff. Where's Jeff? Worker two, Jeff, on the worker two sheet. I did you? I, I hope you did 2.4 seconds. <laughs> 14. Oh, he must have. He did it exactly how, how uh, like it's a better improvement. Okay, so let's go to worker three. Um, Lisa. 19. Wow. 19. 
Rick, uh, Lisa has been uh, <clears throat> performing worse and worse every time. Matt. Listen. Yeah, okay, keep going, keep going. Yeah, we'll finish this round, Matt. Twenty. Oh, okay. All right, um, we're going to be entering week four. Could I make another suggestion, Terry? Yeah. Trying to help you out. I don't want to see this investment go bad. Um, I've entrusted you to manage this team. Um, we've we've tried the uh, we've tried. Um, some training already, but have you considered maybe we need to understand uh, the basic personality types because we are in a group and and it's very important to see, you know, your your profile. So have you ever done a something like a Myers Briggs or any one of the many uh, personality tests that are out there? Perhaps if you did that, um, you might get a better idea of how to manage them properly and motivate yeah like if we knew who the reds and the greens and the blues and the yellows were we could really we could really work this group better yeah i, I, I agree yeah let's do that um all right uh all right everybody come on we've got to really we got to uh, satisfy our customers so you know quality starts with you let's um start week four all right marissa I'm going to go. Thanks. It worked. It worked. Knowing her color was yellow, we were able to make this work. Um, okay. Um, let's go to Jeff. Are you too? Wow, yes, 22. Um, Lisa. Twenty. Okay, and Matt. Eighteen. Okay. Um, let's let's do this real quick. Uh, he just got an eighteen. Um, my links aren't working. I'm sorry. I actually prepared for this. Um, oh, you know, we we, we, did. <laughs> we I really did. Um, I think what throws me off is the uh, um, the fact that it's the online Excel. Um, whoops. That's not what I wanted. Yeah, it's a different experience when you have more than uh, two people probably in the spreadsheet trying to. Well, and also I just, the, 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 the desktop version of Excel is just different. Um, it works better. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just quickly doing a summation. So we're, we're gonna do some metrics on you guys um, and we're gonna kind of figure out where we're at here. Um, Matt has performing 71 defects in four weeks. Rick, um, basically Lisa is 69. Um, Jeff is 68. Um, Marissa is 66. She's been performing the best. Um, you know, so I think number one is I think they're, um, you know, we really appreciate the, the hard work at, that Marissa has been doing, but also um, we've got to eradicate some of these defects in quality. Yeah, yeah, we gotta we gotta realize that we've spent a lot of money on training and education and cycle analysis. Um, clearly, we just have to kind of go um, uh, old school, and uh, you know, if we need to terminate, I think we're going to have to. I think we're going to have to terminate a couple people. I would um, prefer to do it through an email. That's all, so that everyone knows that a particular person is getting terminated, so that they can. <laughs> suffer the slings of outrageous fortune so just send and it's definitely going to be poor performance based so okay. there won't be any severance packages um so i think what we're going to have to do right now is we're going to have to let go of lisa and we're going to have to let go of matt um you know you just couldn't cut it for this team 
And, um, and so let's just stick with our good workers and, you know, double down on Jeff and Marissa. Okay. Yeah, we're going to, again, take in the Elon Musk point of view of management. <laughs> I don't know what is. Um, okay, so let's just finish out the simulation with the, the last two, uh, two weeks. Um, and we've now fired two people. Um, Marissa, like bonus for you, you get a turkey. And, uh, <laughs> and go ahead and let's um, finish out these last two weeks and see how your performance does now that you've been um, recognized. All right. Sixteen. Sixteen, I agree. She's, she is good. Jeff. Sorry, my thing went. Did it? Do you want me to do it for you? Yeah, I okay. lost my. Okay. My, oh, there it is. There it is. Oh, did okay. Oh, okay. Well, I just did it for you. Let's oh, that's fine. Twenty-one. Of course, I was out of my yes. element when I did it, and I didn't um, do it that's properly. Terribly. I think we may need to just, we may need to talk. <laughs> I mean, uh, Rick, I Rick, I'm sure it was just my management too. Yeah, um, Marissa, last time six. All right, so what does she got? 23. Okay, 23, wow. Uh -oh. Yeah. And then Jeff, last time, six. Nineteen. Nineteen. Mm -hmm. You know, Terry. Um, based on, based on your performance as a manager, um, I don't know if I can keep pursuing investing any more money. Customers called me, wants to cancel so they can get it cheaper in China with better quality. In fact, not China, China is too expensive. We found a place in, um, uh, inner in, uh, Papua New Guinea. Uh, which the people will do it for very inexpensively. So we're going to move to New Guinea. And um, by the way, they don't have any, any social benefits. They just nothing. So I'm going to have to close shop. Terry, I wish you well as, as a manager and uh, the rest of you. Um, good luck. So I think we've all been fired. So all because I think um, because this management, this management flaw of thinking that if we just work the workers um, and and keep riding the workers. So I don't know how Elon is so successful, but um, he's got the magic. So this is the, where we where we want to go. So ending the uh, the game. And I think everybody I kind of gets... everyone I was teasing, of course, play rolling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so, so this is what I want to do. Let, um, how many people are leaving um, early? Like it's eight thirty-six. Who's all leaving what, um, early? How long does this go till nine? Nine a.m. Yep. And so I guess folks, um, I know sometimes people have to drop off for their daily scrums or whatnot. So if you need to do that now, go ahead. But if you want to hang out for a little bit, I believe Terry and Rick have some additional things they'd like to share. That, in fact, it's important that. Uh... You, you follow at least a part of it afterwards because that explains what's happened. Yeah, um, yeah, like that's why I want to run through where the lessons that. are. Yeah, and and by the way, the uh, spreadsheet itself, I'm willing to give to anybody and I put everything in it if anybody wants it. But the point that's going on, first of all, when you watch this, Deming draws, if you, you could go on YouTube and you can actually watch Deming do this, he draws this thing out for like a whole hour and he's just cruel. He kind of goes through the whole process and he's, it's always like a demonstration with like 200 people in the room, like, cause it's Deming. Um, but where he's getting to is, is that when we're in a stable system, everybody can see the PowerPoint now, right? 
Mm -hmm. Okay, when we're in a stable system, the results don't get better without intervention to the process. So what we kept doing is, is we kept blaming workers and I work and I work as a consultant with managers. They're constantly calling out individuals in their process for all of the failures that they're, my workers aren't doing this, my workers aren't taking leadership, they're not doing this. And what ends up happening is I keep kind of trying to, it's the shifting. So if anybody's heard this concept, which is it's your process, not your people. And so I, you just have to keep saying it's your process, not your people. Um, I think Deming, what did Deming say that most problems are generally related to what percentage, Rick? It was like 95% or some, some high percentage uh, are typically related to the overall system and not individuals. Now, I do want to point out that, yes, sometimes you do get an individual that is an outlier and, you know, for discipline reasons or whatever, you then need to handle that accordingly. But typically most of the variation quality, bad quality or bad results is uh, due to the system, the, the system that you're in. And, and what, I, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the math that proves that um, I'm going to we're going to get there is we'll look at the statistics and actually look at the deviation chart and show that this was a in control system by doing the statistics. But what I want to do is run through the, the lessons real quick in case anybody has to drop off. Um, most very variation then comes from the process, not from the workers. Again, when we started this, we said willing workers. And so we all know there's some people that aren't willing workers, but most people actually have very good intentions. They're trying to do a good job. And I know as an engineer, I was always convinced that every time I, um, I felt like I could never win. Like I could never win in the system that I was within. And that's where Deming said, what did he say about a, a, a bad system, Rick? Well, well, yeah, I mean, bad system will beat a good person every time. Exactly. Yeah, sorry. Um, sometimes he's sometimes Rick knows exactly what I'm thinking and sometimes not. Um, if you don't like the results, improve the system of production. Don't fire and reprimand the workers. Um, the workers could not do better inside the system, no matter what they did. So it doesn't matter if they were doing 2.4. See, and that's the other thing. The 2.4 seconds. Those are those crazy things that managers like like that a, that a company might have as like these standard processes that aren't really affecting the outcome of the work. Um, that's that could be an example of like over specking um, your process, you know, so now you got to go through all these extra things, but you don't really get a different outcome. confusing correlation with causality, things like that. Yeah. Um, the other thing is ranking personnel did not serve any purpose. Um, I remember when when I'd have like coworkers getting like, you know, put on a pedestal and I'm like, yeah, but look at the clients they get. Of course, they're making profits. And I'm like, like working all the most complex projects. And of course, my projects are losers. And then we were advancing people to associate and principal based on your profitability. And I'm like, yeah, well, he's set up to win. Um, Every target must have a method that makes it possible. Otherwise you're forcing employees into undesirable behaviors. It also kills collaboration. So if, if it can't even be possible for them to do it. So we set up the spreadsheet is set up so that 20%, uh, um, every time 20% of the, the bead is going to be 20% red. So yeah, and we did it on a random generator, which means that there's, you know, but that's the same thing going on in the box. 20% of the beads are red. So how are you supposed to not get a red? Um, and then system-wide action is required for an effective improvement. Um, and then workers will be under pressure to develop workarounds. And I always find if you go into a system and you see a lot of workarounds, there's a system that needs to get fixed, but people are getting blamed all the time for the workarounds. I sit in my CEO's office all the time and he's yelling at me going, you know, go after the workarounds. And it's those people, we got to stop them. And it's like, it's the system we got to fix. Um, so this is, I was, this is, I'm just gleaming this, um, but just from a manager perspective, we have to recognize that some of the management methods are ineffective and they're actually harmful to the organization. Um, managing in a way that assumes individuals have complete control over their performance is, is silly and ignoring the effects of the whole system on production results. Um, that's, a, that's a big thing when we're thinking in um, production, uh, thinking in systems. 
Um, so, so this is, um, this is what we did. We did worker four, and then I'm going to go through the math now. Does anybody have any questions about the, the, the basic lessons? Did, oh, you know what? This is a really good point. Does anybody have any observations from the simulation that they can relate to a situation that they would share? Well, I, I just want to say that I appreciate Rick throwing in the Elon Musk thing because that guy is a effing idiot, but he gets, you know, put on this pedestal. And, and yeah, it really, that spoke to me. I knew right away you were trolling us, but I was like, ah, that just drives me nuts because it's, yeah, anyway. I was, I was I was worried that there might be a few Elon Musk fans, you know, management fans. Um, hmm. so I, but I took a chance, so it worked. And by the way, we're both like a fan of all of the uh, the you know strengths finders and all of the play, ways that we explore human beings. Um, but the problem is, is the correlation and causation thing. It's like the system isn't going well, so therefore we should find out what colors everybody are, so we can all work to be better together. And it's like. No, the process just needs to get fixed. Um, yeah, and I, I think uh, an example, I mean, I worked for a pretty large millwork company as a project manager, and it was always talking to the people, hey, they're just a little bit too slow. They just don't understand the process. And I'm amazed at the blind spots that are organizationally there all the time. It's, just, it's, it's mind boggling. And what's funny is the workers actually see it. I mean, that's the, that's the issue is the people that work do see the system issues. And what does it do to human beings? It, it's demoralizing and it makes totally, them just shut down. Totally. Yeah, it's disrespect. Totally. So shifting a little bit into the um, the, the, the statistics of this. OK, um, right. This is just an introduction to control charts. Um, basically, in a control chart, a control chart is every how many people are familiar with control charts? A little bit okay well the way that a control chart works is is it basically is mapping out um do you want to rick do you want to talk about it yeah 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 so if you could imagine um look at the act look at the chart we've got the measurement on the on the uh, y-axis and then the time on the x up so time would be you know in this case 120 um so we took a measurement of some results so let's say it was the number of bad beads for example, so we could have said, okay, um, you know, on on day one, we got just a little under 120 bad beads. Then on day two or day, th yeah, we day th three. And we add them all up. Yep. We dropped. So what what we do is, and there's software packages that'll do this. You just record the results, and you just track it through time, and then you look at it. And, uh, you know, first thing you would do is you'd see it and you would then do a process average. So you could do a trend line, you know, quickly look at uh, what the average of the particular process we have now. And then what we would do, and if you were in a full class, we would teach you uh, a couple statistical formulas on how to calculate what we call the upper and lower control limits. And those are the ones in the red uh dashed lines which that is basically also, something related to like you take all the data you figure out the standard deviation of all of that data together you go like three above three below of standard deviation and this is uh, you know i don't know i'm in my weak mind i'll say well that's kind of like six sigma but the whole point is is you're creating a bound and then you're you're saying that anything outside of that boundary is is out of control but everything inside that boundary is in control. And the things that are in control are things that are just Random. typical. Yeah, it's just the typical, it's, the, it's like Rick always says, the fan is going and there's little noises that you hear. You're not gonna go like take the fan apart because you hear that. But when something weird happens that's out of control, you might do something. So we, we we would call what's in control. In other words, it's within the uh, limits of the process. Is it's common cause variation. In other words, things do vary, but it's 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 just built in. It's intrinsic into the system. Whereas special cause, so we created a a division point. Special cause is typically something that's coming outside and external or something that could be assignable or with a little bit of analysis you could actually determine what that cause is 
And so what you want to do is first off, is the system that I'm in, does it have special cause events or is all the variation just due to the norm? In other words, it's part of the process, common cause variation. And so before you do anything, you want to validate that your process is in statistical control. Now, if it isn't, the first step is to find out, well, what, what are those special cause events? Did we get a new employee that wasn't properly trained? Uh, did equipment mal uh, always malfunction on second shift? Uh, you, know, all, you know, all the little mysteries. Once you've gotten rid of special cause, then you have to look at, well, what can I do? In Sorry, I, I actually had some things. Uh, examples of common cause variation. Yeah, like unclear scope definition, poor management, insufficient procedures. Weather conditions can be like, I, ca I can't believe when I go to a construction site and they say, well, it's raining. And I'm like, it like it rains all the time like that is just part of like we've got to figure out how to get or it's cold cold it's cold that one i'm like what that's like common cause now lightning hit my equipment that's special cause so you know it's like what is the difference between and what we often do is people will assign they'll they'll mix up special cause and common cause right 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 and Part of what Deming's message was is that a lot of we, we'd spend a lot of time putzing around and yelling and screaming uh, when, in fact, the the variation is caused just by the system, which the red bead shows that most of the, the noise, what, you know, noise versus signal is another way of saying it. But we were yelling at people because in reality, look at that scatter of the of the possibilities statistically they're all possible and anyone could get it no matter how good they think they are that is the limits of how well your system is and so to yell at a particular uh observation and say oh this one's good this one's bad it's random it's pure random yeah statistical fluctuations so and this is this one right here just uh, uh bridging on what he's saying so this is like some data that i took from one time when we did it and then i just did all the math that goes in it you figure out the average and so i charted the average and then by using you you know these statistical standard deviation things we figured out that um based on the sample size that the upper control limit was 28.8 and the lower control limit was six so that means if if we got any red beads within that, it means it's a it's a process in control. And here's the magic: when Rick and I uh, teach this to our students, we're like, if if it's common cause variation, you should attack it in a very very different way. Like your child's having a temper tantrum, should you act like this is the first time? No, you should be calm. You know, you kind of, as a parent, you might be thinking to the next, or if there's something going on that's common cause in the office, you don't react. You just kind of have to figure out, you don't react immediate and, and get upset. But if it's special cause, it's assignable, and it might mean that we actually should react. Like there should be an issue. Like for example, if a worker really truly consistently is performing outside of this bounds, we probably should do something about it. So it's kind of a call to action if it's if it's special cause. I think another key part is just when uh, we're using statistics, since we are in a with a lot of variation and just everything, it's just realizing that there we have to create a filter, some mechanism to filter out what we call special versus common and not overreact to the common cause. And, and if we want to get to the common cause, that will involve a systemic change that will involve people looking at, do, do we have the right policies? Do we have the right equipment? Do we have the right training? Um, is management um, motivating and using the right uh, metrics? One thing we find often is that the bad, using bad metrics, using the, you know, measuring people the wrong way will oh, cause sorry. I'm gonna get everything you're trying to not yeah. have. And yeah. so, uh, investigation of what management or supervision yeah. is using as a measure 
often is a big one. Oh, here's another one from Goldratt. Yeah. Tell me how you measure me and I will tell you how I behave. And if you measure me stupidly, don't behave, don't blame me if I inadvertently behave stupidly. You yeah. set up the measures. You have to think through the possible consequences. How, how do people game a particular measure? Because mm -hmm. people will start gaming and you will not understand what's really going on and make very, very bad decisions. Yeah. So this is this is not something you do in a second. The the other thing that, you know, I threw this in because I like if I was going to try to lift a boulder and I had a fulcrum, I would definitely want to be the farthest out in the A or B position to push down. And I guess this is um, another thing that I'm always thinking about when I'm thinking about variation is what the work that that was built off of Danello Meadows, but it's the leverage points and, and, and in a system. And the reality is, is if you change workers out, you're like in the, one of the lowest levels of leverage. And so when I hear a manager say things like, well, I just need to change, the, the workers are just not good enough and I got to change them. M what I'm hearing um, is, is that they're not very sophisticated in management. Um, when I hear um, managers, so I'm always looking for indicators of like what maturity level a manager is at. When I hear them consistently say things like, it's the process, not my people, I need to improve the process, I need to create better a better process, then I know what they're really, they're acting in this. And then what happens is, is when you get into the major areas of like being able to improve a system and have real power over the system is when you actually just change the CEO, like changes the goals and, you know, and like everything becomes a, a, like a whole different paradigm um, shift. Um, but it's when you get into the middle, that's where you're getting into like feedback loops between um, one of the things that I'm always challenging department managers is number one, don't blame your people. But number two is, is see if you can fix it within your department, but even more powerful, it's probably an interdepartmental issue. And so how do those two departments exchange work and flow between, and if we can do work on those handoffs in those areas, um, that will often improve things, even at higher levels when we can do multi-departmental improvements. Um, yeah, that's the bad system. Um, oh, the other thing that they find is that like this experiment um, has almost no opportunity for any variation other than to be blamed on the system. Um, when they do it in person, though, they actually, if you don't get a bead, they actually count that as a red bead. And they said that's the only time they've ever found special cause variation is because people just literally aren't getting beads. Um, so just for the record, from a simulation perspective, I thought that was an interesting point that I'd never heard before. Um, There's any... a lot more to it, but this just gives you an intro, a simple intro. Yeah. And I think you noted that quickly you end up in some kind of systems thinking mode because you have to look at it holistically if you really want a shot at getting improvement. Otherwise, you're just kind of chasing butterflies. You know, it's. <laughs> yeah, if anybody's a statistician and they want to actually be able to do the math, we actually put the slides for how we teach to do the actual calculation in the spreadsheet. And again, I'm willing to like anybody can have this spreadsheet. I, it, I'm just trying to, it's not my work, it's Deming's. And how do we get a copy of it? Um, I can, um, I can, again, I'll, I could share it and you could, I think you can scoop it. So I'll share um, anyone with the link and I'll just grab the link again and put it here in the, um, I think it's already in the chat, but I'll put it in the chat. Okay, thank you. And Marissa, is, it's fine if it's, it gets sent out afterwards too. Okay. Um, I yeah, don't care so, what anybody does with it. I've got no ownership on it. I literally just put it together and there's flaws and just like every engineer who puts together a spreadsheet. Totally okay. Yeah. Well, awesome. Thank you. I guess thank I, you I, I, I have some questions. Um, I'm, I'm just curious. I mean, don't managers at higher levels or even C-suite folk I mean, is it, isn't this sort of a required part of their training to understand 
their systems and understanding how to work their systems. I guess that's what I'm trying to, I'm a little bit confused. It seems like it's new, and but it should be somewhat fundamental to any kind of business development in any in any field, I guess. Is, and I, can, I, can I hit on that one? Um, I think a lot depends on how, again, the culture of the company um, in terms of how people are promoted, whether um, we promote people from within and just kind of um, groom them to our own uh, culture. Uh, a lot of companies uh, don't want outside influence. They're very happy with the way things are, and it can be very successful. Uh, other companies want outside influence or they want people that have had some more formal training you know get a master's uh in business where a lot of this is taught but even if you come in from the outside if you're caught in the what i call the measurement hell and i wish i had more time to discuss it but a lot of it ends up because the people are being measured and when you actually start in certain ways. And when you start analyzing the metrics, the measurements, you often find that they're counterproductive in the long run. They may be very good in the short term. So there's always a conflict, short term versus long term. And the other major conflict is do what's good for the individual versus do what's good for the whole. And so you're always wrestling between those eternal conflicts and that just takes seasoning and extra reading and studying on the outside. And a lot of people, when they're done from work, they just tired. They come home, they got a family. They don't have time to go read a, a book by Deming. It's just a lot of extra stuff. That's and why there's certain companies... industries, by the way, Rick, I was just listening to somebody talk about this. There are certain industries that are just they're just they bury themselves in work so they don't have to improve it's like a, a it's a right. vicious feedback loop when it comes to systems and and coming out of construction and design everybody's too busy to improve and so and then everybody gets promoted based on you being good at the craft not at being good at management it's or only political been... or cat I'm, I'm sorry yeah. uh, terry political you know. Yeah, political. Oh, the other thing, my favorite thing was people <clears throat> buying into leadership. So in small firms, it's really you just buy your way into leadership. And I'm like, right. oh, oh, I thought it was going to be merit based. Like I, I literally thought right. it was going to be merit based. Well, I, I'm, I'm also seeing the remark by Jeff, which I think is very, very pertinent. Also, is that you find yourself in a system that you're blind to, and so those that do want to change it end up being ejected from and that's actually a very important thing to remember is yes. a lot of people don't have even the insight to be able to see that they're in a system that is dysfunctional not right. that i would encourage everybody to become a consultant because there's a lot of negative parts of it too but what i found is that being outside of a system i have huge impact on my client as long as the ceo is win willing to pull me in I can have major impact because I can go over the whole system. But when I was within systems, I was just, it was, it was a problem. Yeah. yeah. The, the, so the advantage I, of a guru, you know, someone who's at least 50 feet comes from a different company uh, or has a reputation, there's some psychological effects of having an outsider assist and even if you are an internal coach trying to help your staff sometimes by bringing in an outsider just to just to have uh them see that you have get some additional resources is where the advantage of an outsider can really uh, be a leverage point yeah well thank you rick and terry um unfortunately we're, we're at time and i'm gonna yeah. have to leave for nine o'clock so i think it'll this zoom will end when i leave uh so thank you very much terry and uh rick for being with us today uh, i'm assuming people can reach out to you on linkedin and connect if they want to yep. yeah marissa does the zoom room go away when you leave or can we leave I, it open i I don't know that this is Chris's and I don't know. I don't know what he it was open when we came in. So, so I think you could leave if anybody okay, wanted to me, stick around and talk. Yeah, well, let's let's see. Um, I'm 